This is Security Weekly. For security professionals, by security professionals. On to the technical segment. Using Nmap to screenshot web services. So this is based on previous technical segment that I did on if you tell a program to visit a website, uh, take a screenshot of it, and then put that into another HTML local file, uh, it's really useful because sometimes in a pen test or whatever, or even in your own local environment, you find that you've got a lot of web services. Web services can be vulnerable. You may have web applications that you don't know about. So being able to find those and screenshot it, the screenshot can be an indication that it might be something you want to look into. So this segment is based on an outstanding post from the folks at Trustwave Spider Labs. You can find the original post uh, in the link in the show notes titled Using Nmap to Screenshot Web Services. Refer to that article on how to get started by installing uh, the screenshot library in the NSE script. Uh, I do like this type of functionality in Nmap, and I have to say, in my tests, it has run so much better than the other uh, Perl script, and uh, it was like GNOME web screenshot or whatever program. Um, I find that the, this script runs a lot better in the library they're using to do the screenshot. And of course, uh, the Nmap engine is much more efficient in doing this. So I made some changes to the script that was posted uh, from the Trustwave blog. I uh, changed the name of the binary. So there's this binary program that you use called WKHTML to image. Since I'm in a 64-bit system, I changed mine to uh, AMD64 as opposed to I386. I could have also created a soft link, but I decided to modify the script. I also modified the NSE script and removed, um, after it creates a screenshot of the website, it saves it to a file. It calls that file by default screenshot dash nmap dash, then the IP address, and then colon, and then uh, the port dot png. So to be able to script it more easily, I modified the NSE script to just take out that first screenshot dash nmap dash thing. So the file name is the IP address, colon, and the port. So it was way easier for me to, to uh, parse after that. So my changes are in a diff in the, in the show notes that implement those two changes. My nmap command is slightly different from the one that uh, was used in uh, the blog post. I focused on, um, uh, basically I told nmap don't ping the host because I only care about specific ports. Uh, so I do dash capital P0, then I did dash lowercase p 80 comma 443. My script currently only takes into account port 80 and port 443. And then uh, I'll get into how it distinguishes between the two when it writes the output. Um, so I told it to only do that. I, I will talk about how my feature requests or lists of stuff to code into it um, myself are at the, the end of the, the segment. Uh, I then did dash dash script a equals HTTP dash screenshot, which again, the blog post shows you how to get that installed and, and updated uh, in the Nmap database. Um, so I'm basically saying go find all of the uh, servers that or systems that have port 80 or 443 open, take a screenshot of the resulting page. And what that gives you is it dumps out all the PNG files into the current directory that you're in. That's all the script does right now which is fine, we can deal with that. There's then, the author provided this little uh, bash awk script that takes the file names and builds an HTML file based off of all of your screenshots. I modified that in a few different ways. Um, the first thing I did was I added uh, an HTML href link, an anchor link, so like I made the IP address and the port of the system that it took a screenshot of, I made it an actual link to jump over to that system, which is handy. I mean, when you're going through the results, you can just now click, and it jumps over to that page. Um, I used a kind of a, a new, to me, awk routine called sub, which does the same thing like as a said expression, except you can do it in line inside of your awk script. I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, I found that today. So essentially what I do is when I get the input from uh, into awk, uh, I run the substitute, and I basically remove the .png from the file name because I don't I don't care about that. I'm basically just care about the IP address and port. So I actually strip off .png inline in the aux script, which I thought was pretty neat, uh, handy little thing to do. Then I use my if statement from my previous segment, which makes the distinction based on port number whether it's an SSL web server or not. So I say if the port is four four three 
print inside of the link HTTPS colon slash slash and then the IP address. If it's not port four three, uh, port four four three, then do HTTP colon slash slash the IP address and the port. Again, I'm only taking into consideration eighty and four four three. This script also noticed the limitation that if the port is anything other than four four three, it automatically assumes that it's non SSL. So if you have an SSL service on a non standard port, uh, this script will not work so well for you. I do want to solve that problem though. Uh, and then I build the page, you know, embedding the image with a uh, with a 400 uh, into the HTML, so that you get basically a thumbnail of what the screenshot of the running web service was um, when you uh, run it against your targets. There's an example screenshot of my HTML page, which results, which is again the hyperlink um, IP address colon port. If it's 443, it uses HTTPS. Anything else is HTTP. You can click the link. Jump over to the system that uh, you discovered and see a screenshot of it. So, for example, if you see a web camera or whatever and you want to interact with it, you'll see it easily inside of this output. And again, it did run a lot, a lot more efficiently than some of my previous attempts. And we've gotten a lot of feedback about different ways to do this. So I wanted to showcase some different ways uh, in which to accomplish this. I, I think this is going to be the way that I, I want to see further developed. Um, it's kind of like, you know, like making a wish, like... If you think about how you know a goal you want to accomplish and think really hard about it, the next day when you search for it on Google, you'll find someone else who's already written it. So that's kind of what I'm hoping for here. Is that by the, by the time this airs and I go back and I look, that people will take into consideration my feature request and where I really want this process to go. I think for me to use it on every pen test, it has to have all these features that I that I discover, and I think this will really be. Um, an extremely useful tool for doing web service discovery. I really want to be able to identify all HTTP or HTTPS services. So right now it's based on port. I want to be able to distinguish between an SSL port that's not on 443, construct the appropriate link, um, and an HTTP port on any port. So basically whether you're running a web service with SSL or not on any port, it ends up in the list and distinguishes between them. Um, so that's cool. We're going to put that in the script. Um, I want the HTTP headers in the output. So in addition to seeing the IP address and port, whether it's SSL or not, in a screenshot of it, I want to see, is it running Apache, is it running PHP, a little information that comes from the HTTP headers, which may help me determine if it's something I'm interested in or not. Now the old script web scour did that for you, um, so I'd like to see that functionality ported over to the NSE script. Now there are already existing NSE scripts to do that. So I suppose you could run them as well. Those would end up in the Nmap output, and I suppose you could write a script to parse them together. But I really think I see all this converging into one giant uh, NSE script or being you know, implemented in uh, the Nmap scripting engine. Um, the final thing that I want to do, and I think this is really the icing on the cake, because if you can point your scanner at a range of IP addresses or a whole bunch of uh, host names even, it was funny, Randy just talked about how an IPv6 is probably going to make this script obsolete. Uh, as he said, it takes 10 to the 10th years to scan some IPv6 address space. But I want to be able to feed the scripts a list of directories that have been brute forced from each. So in addition to HTTP or HTTPS services being on any ports being in the list, I also want to go to all of those services and do web server directory or file brute forcing, probably both for files and directories. Some default, a small list of default files or directories, brute force those, then add those into the list of things being screenshotted, right? Because my IP address slash is going to have a screenshot associated with it, but my IP address slash admin may be a totally different result, and I want to see that screenshot as well. So by adding in, like we, Larry, I think on episode 250, did a tech segment on Derby, the directory brute forcer. Awesome tool. I use it uh, all the time. Um, I want to take the results from that and kind of suck that into this whole process so that I'm taking screenshots of every directory and potential file that contains an interesting page, and I'm putting that inside of my results as well. So those are the places where I, I'd like to see this go and kind of combine that in. Um, Again, I you know I find it interesting that Randy talked about IPv6 and how you know scanning of this nature is uh, 
is going to be very challenging uh, moving ahead. So if anyone has more information on how they're solving that problem or wants to help out with the NSE script or um, write it for me, that's awesome. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> do our uh, work for us. Yeah, do our work for us. Uh, I, it is something I'm going to work on, so if you are working on it, please reach out to us. I'd love to collaborate on that because I think this is going to be a super useful script. It certainly already, even if it's limited capacity, has helped me out a lot, especially when you're doing a pen test against um, a target that has lots of web services. Uh, it can be really useful in determining which ones are most interesting or maybe finding some that no one else knew was there uh, before you were running the script.